everybody. I'm stretching. Ugh. Hey, what's up? So we are back for vlogging. We're gonna do another set of marathon vlogs today. Awesome. Like like a million in a row. So you guys will know that we won't miss any for a while. Yep. All right, today we're we're gonna do themes too, right? Yeah, we're gonna do themes, okay. and we're probably gonna record through Christmas, and then take Christmas off, and then be back on. Right. Something like that. Yeah, because <coughs> Christmas is on a Wednesday, and we're gonna have to go see everyone that weekend. So yeah. All right, so we're going to talk about God politics as our first theme. So, first question. From a social perspective, what does it mean to the gods when one god has more associated purviews or epics than another? Social perspective. Um, so, like, Hecate has more associations than Hermes. What does that mean socially? Socially, it doesn't mean anything. I guess it kind of means they're probably more widespread. Like, they're... Uh doing more things, which uh, generally spreads out their ability to do their thing the best. Like uh, like the Greeks are very specific for that. Like if you have Ares, God of War, and he's just doing that really, really, really well, um, versus other guy who's God of like 10 things and war, uh, he's going to be juggling juggling too many things. Um, it's going to be difficult to handle all of that. I think some of it depends on how the Pantheon in question thinks of like mortal worship and how much that matters to them. Like, uh, if you have, the more associations you have generally, the more widespread you are known to mortals, or at least different mortals. Because you often get that, because different cults, like, have different particular things they laud you for. So if you're from a pantheon, like, maybe, uh, the Teotl, that care a lot about you having a lot of humans involved, they might actually be like, oh, that's a, that's a plus for you. Mm -hmm. But if you're from a pantheon like the Anuna that doesn't think humans matter even slightly, they may not care. I mean, I'm also not sure that's that, that big a difference, right? Because mm -hmm. there's nowhere in, um, in Greece Zeus wasn't worshipped. That's true. Like, but he's very specific things too. So I, I'm yeah. not sure. I'm not sure associated. It's directly correlated to different uh, amount of people worshiping you uh, as much. That's true. And you can never, you can never say, well, more associations means more powerful because it doesn't. Like to use Zeus as an example, Hecate has way more exam, way more associations with Zeus, but she's obviously not more powerful than Zeus. Although Either, she's pretty powerful. Uh, she is very powerful. Zeus respects her, but he's still the boss. Yeah. Um. So you know, you're never gonna. You're not usually going to have gods be like, well, I can do three things and you can do two things, so I'm more important than you. Um, I think new science might see that as kind of pecking order as they're coming up, but uh, it really depends what they do and in what dimension. And, you know, if that is, if you have association with fertility because you're the god of getting drunk and making fermented stuff, then that depends on whether your pantheon thinks that's a good thing to be god of or not. If not, mm -hmm. then it doesn't even matter that you're associated with that. That might even be a black mark. Yeah. Um, yeah, it all depends what the people you're trying to talk to value as as things. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think having more is generally good or bad. Um, you could have more and that's more chances for people to like the thing you're doing. Yeah. But you could have more than more chances for people to dislike the thing you are associated with. So. And more also probably means more pain in your butt because the more hats they know you can wear, the more time different things people are going to come and expect you to do. Yeah. You know, Hermes doesn't probably want to have all these purviews that uh, Hecate has because then people would be expecting to do all that stuff all the time. And that'd be pain in the butt. All right. Question answer. Second question, is it possible for a god through either fate decree like magic or just sheer force of will to change their modus operandi? For example, I have a game idea that revolves around the idea of Odin abandoning his normal methods to try the novel approach of honesty and good faith to launch a plan to avert Ragnarok. Uh, is, the idea is that trying to be good in his tactics might get him further. Is that a plausible thing he could change? I think there's some confusion here between the way a god acts and the way fate affects gods. Um... Because fate will affect you in terms of what you can do, but it cannot change your free will of what you decide to do. If that makes any sense. So, like, Odin is always free to change his mind and do whatever he wants, based on whatever he thinks is going to be a good idea. Uh, he doesn't need to do any fate dickery to decide he's going to be nice today. <clears throat> fate bonds are not forcing him to be a douche. They're forcing him to have manipulation, but he doesn't have to use that manipulation for douchery. But he might be a douche. That's yeah. what he decides to do every day. Yeah. And this, I like this question because it poses the philosophical question of if Odin is only not being a douche as a means to an end, is he really not being a douche? Mm. Or is well, he just I mean, being, you know, Odin still? That's, that's the eternal douche question, right? It is. If you're being nice only to get something out of it, are you really nice? Yeah. I think a lot of gods usually the answer is, no, I'm being nice because that's how I get stuff done. But, you know, it depends on the person. Um, but yeah, uh, gods can always change the way they do stuff. And if you have a plot seed that is like, Odin has found out X fact, and it makes him realize that being nice will maybe get stuff done better than being a douche, then of course he can totally go ahead and just be a nice person. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't change his powers, he'll still have illusion, he'll still have trickery powers, he'll still have manipulation, but 
or not illusion, he has some illusion, but he'll still have manipulation and magic and all that stuff, but he doesn't have to use that to be a dick. He can use it to be a nice person. Yeah. Yeah. Fate's not going to say you can't do that. I've decided you're a dick. It's just going to give him the tools that make dickery so easy, and then he's going to have to resist that. So. I think that's all I got on that one. Yeah. I, that I just uh, pulled something in my neck. Okay, well, John may be back there for the rest of this vlog. I'm not sure yet. So. Third question. Can you elaborate on the relationship between the Yazada and the Deva? Why do they see each other as enemies? Yes. Question answered. Wait, that was the second question. Okay, so the thing with the Yazada and the Deva is that um, we don't know what the trigger event is, but the Yazada and the Deva are from two religions that traditionally consider the other person the enemy. So, in Well, Hindu theoretically, they're from one religion, right? Right. Well, theoretically, if you get down to like comparative Indo-European religion way, way long ago before we have any good records on anything, they are probably part of the same original religion that split in two different directions. And we don't actually know why. Um, most likely, it was just like competing priesthoods set up different places and then like evolved in different directions until it became crazy. They got far enough away crazy. Yes. They could make decisions like that. So what you're looking at is the, for the Deva, their traditional enemy are the Ashura, uh, who are the evil demon gods. Um, it, they're literally another class of gods that are bad guys that we have to deal with. And then for the Yazada, the other class of gods who are bad guys we have to deal with are called Deva. And uh, they actually, and it's not just a coincidence of names, because they're actually like named, like Indra is named as one of the worst and most evil Deva. And uh, for the Yazada, and then the Yazada or the Deva will name some of the Yazada as Asura that are not to be trusted, you know. So, uh, and they're they're actually the same words. Like Deva spelled slightly differently in the two languages, but it's obviously the same root word. And Asura, which is what the Deva call the Yazada, is the same root word as Ahura, which is what the Yazada call themselves, and which is what in the name of their boss Ahura Mazda. Both all those words just mean God that is not one of us. So. We, it's very obvious that they don't like each other because you've got like tons and tons and you know thousands of years of mythology that says we don't like those people. They're evil. And they tell stories about each other doing evil stuff and being horrible and probably causing the end of the world at some point. Um, but we don't actually know if there's a trigger event ever. There's no event where we can say, oh, the Azadi right. and David. Neither, neither talks about like a great fight. flood that made it happen. It was just in both of their histories. For all eternity, these are the bad guys. Kind of. Early Hinduism. Uh, the Gazada act, or the De Ashura actually aren't always evil. They're just different gods who kind of do their own thing, and then at some point they like make a full shift to evil. And no one explains that, so you can't like go through. Well, and be, like, the Trimurti is like we don't want to. Yeah, the Trimurti who kind of kind of rolled in and changed that religion pretty thoroughly. But uh, the only thing I can think of as maybe an instigating event is the uh, the Ocean of Milk episode in Hindu mythology, where basically the Deva decide they want all this stuff. They want to turn the Ocean of Milk. And, you know, there's stuff, awesome treasures come out of the ocean of milk, and it's a big deal. But they can't do it by themselves, so they have to get the Ashura to help them. And both sides do, like, a giant tug-of-war, basically, that makes a giant cork in the middle turn that turns the ocean. And in doing that, they create the, they create um, Amrita, which is the elixir of immortality. And then the Deva straight up are like, no Ashuras can ever have this, this is ours only. So if you want to pick a place and say that's where they fell out, that might be it. But already at that point, they were kind of like other, but kind of like Ashura are not okay. Still kind of like we're going to cooperate with them because we need them, but we don't like them. So it's a weird case where in world mythology, something happened at some point, but it was too long ago and we don't know what it was. Didn't write it down. So you're going to have to, if you need to know for plot reasons why they don't like each other, then you're going to have to come up with what happened. Um, especially for younger gods in those pantheons, they probably don't know. The, all they've known their entire existence is that we hate those people. Yeah. Uh, the older gods may know, but I don't know if they would necessarily talk about it, uh, especially if it's something they did that they don't really want to talk about. It depends on what you decide actually happened. Well, that sounds good to me. All right. Awesome. Uh, fourth question. You always talk about gods leaving the world because of fate bonds, but why did they stay in the first place? They should have known about fate bonds during that time. Was the risk just worth the reward for a while? Uh, well, a couple things. You can talk about... Uh... Greece does this mostly. I don't know. I guess uh, Aztecs do it too. Um, a lot of people do different ages of man. Mm -hmm. And there was a, the Greek one specifically, like there was a, uh, there used to be a golden age where humans lived for thousands of years and everything was fine. And uh, now we're in the iron we, age. bronze. Oh, we're all the way down. We're iron. We're the iron. shitty age. Yeah, the shittiest, the shittiest of people. Um, and the way it's described, every all the other ages had humans that were like 
all superhumans or all heroes, maybe all legendary. Um, so it sounds like uh, the way it's described for, for thousands and thousands of years, maybe there weren't humans on Earth or okay. the humans weren't quite quite right. humans. They were all legend one, so maybe they didn't cause So they didn't bombs. cause fate bombs. Or it's um, not the same way. Um, but then something happened where humanity started started doing that. Something happened in the the royals of fate that made that uh, that kind of start to happen. Um, and it's usually presented as something the gods did that they fucked up, like the Greeks destroying their successive races of men till they got to iron, or the Aztec gods destroying the world till they got to the fifth yeah, world. Yeah, it's like the gods were in this great place. It's a, a lot of Adam and Eve type stories where you know we were in this great place, but we fought amongst ourselves and we ruined everything, and now we're stuck with humans that give us fate bonds and everything sucks. Yeah, so it's possible that in like the Age of Heroes, when you have all the stories of Perseus and Theseus and Her- Heracles running around, that you actually didn't get big bonds from hanging out then. That that was just normal stuff. Yeah, that was just normal stuff. Um, but at the same time, uh, another option is, uh, I like that one the best probably, is that there was a long time period where there weren't fate bonds and then things got fucked up enough that these normal humans came and normal humans had like disease and suffered and it was horrible. But those humans were the ones that... Uh, Started giving gods fate bonds, and they probably gods still ran around for a little bit, and they were like, "Wait, wait, what is this?" this Things are getting horrible. Like a few minor gods maybe like got hit real hard, and they were like, "Whoa, we need to back off of this." Yeah, I like that also because it lets you do something that the core setting needs to do, which is say we're going to stop the original gods based on what they do, and not try to worry about how fate bonds may have changed them, and what that this assuming that fate bonds didn't show up initially allows you the opportunity to say these are what the god does. That's actually what the god was or chose for himself. Right. Fate bonds in between haven't changed them really till now the setting of Scion, and now in the game you can have fate bonds change them if it comes up. Yeah. Um, other option is uh, for a long time they were okay with it. Like um, fate bonds got to a critical point. Like they uh, they lived with humans for a while, they did all the stuff, they set up the world, everything was fine, and then eventually they were like, um, wow, you know, Zeus is up there and he's like, you know, I, I have so many fate bonds. Uh, to charisma, I uh, I'm bad at everything else. When did this happen? <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> I have I have 30, 30 cults that worship me for charisma, and I have negative three to every other stat. How do I get anything done? How do I get anything done? Okay, we need to not do this anymore. We I need to Hermes come fix them for me, and then we never go back. We throw Hermes on the the magician pyre. Yeah. Um, um. And that one you can also look at if you are a fan of like looking at the way religions have changed over time. Uh, you can look at that as being like initially what the gods were doing was all like big cosmological level creation stuff and making humans and teaching them how to f- give fire and stuff, which may have been happening mostly in overworlds or in magical locations, so that it's not really fate bond generating. Yes. But then once you get down to the levels where you start having like semi human heroes like Scions, or you have gods actually walking around amongst humans, that would be the point where they started getting fate bonds and started realizing they couldn't deal with it. Mm-hmm. So, there you go. So, those are some options. I mean, uh, it's something that Cyan originally does not explain at all, so you just have to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. But that's why we're here. To fix the game. Alrighty. Is it accurate to say that pantheons that have more virtues in common, like the Acer and the Nemeton Devos, would be on better terms with each other than those that have few in common, like the Inuna and the Theod? Uh, that is, I think, generally speaking, true. Um, uh, I would say probably except for courage. I think I- courage and conviction don't, uh, don't lend themselves to working together necessarily. Um, whereas something like intellect expression, those people will tend to uh, protect the same things, re- respect the same things, put value in the same things. I'd actually reframe the question. I wouldn't say that people with the same virtues necessarily get along better, but people with very different virtues always have conflict. Correct. So um, having the same virtues so by, is no by, guarantee they're going to do what you like. But, but by, by virtue of that... Mm-hmm. Having similar virtues makes you more likely to get along. Right. By default. By default. You are not going to be vengeancing all over something and causing someone else to valor extremity. You're not going right. to be harmonying versus intellect Some... that ruined. Like, right. uh, I have intellect and I made these uh, I made these weird uh, plant monsters and I want to keep them on Earth because I like them and they're like a representation of right. so what something cool I can do in uh, new new experiments in genealogy. And then the Harmony guy's like, no, I have to get it. Gotta, it, gotta, it, can't, it can't be, be here. here. It can't be here. Uh, yeah, so, you know, they it's not always, but it always helps a little bit to have similar, like, core beliefs, so that you don't have to fight over the ones that you don't share in common. Yeah. Uh, conviction's always the sticky one get there, because your convictions might be very different from someone else's. Yeah. Uh, vengeance, similar problems. Yeah, I actually, Because if vengeance uh, against someone that someone else likes, then they're just going to get vengeance on you. There's a question in a couple of weeks that has, uh, 
something about that I that talked about virtues again, mm-hmm. and I had a whole conviction spiel I want to use for that. So okay. in a couple of weeks, I'll talk more about conviction. But I think conviction does mess up everything. Yeah. Alrighty. So every god has a rival and enemies list on their page. But what does that actually mean to them? Okay, those are supposed to be erased a long time ago. Um, it's a lot of work. A There's a lot of god pages. Um, it's a lot of HTML stuff, and Anne doesn't have the time, and I don't HTML. I feel like I just need to go do it now because people brought it up a lot. But basically, the books put those out there, um, I guess, to give you like a basic idea of like how do I politically interact with these things, and especially we, if I don't know them very well. We tried to fix them a little, and then later realized they're just not good or important. Like, you should be making that list for your game on your own. Exactly. You can't go by a default one because that, that doesn't make sense unless there's a whole default setting that has everything written out for you. Yeah, I mean, there are times where we can say, obviously, Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca are rivals and they will you know, bother each other and have rivalries all the time. But, but most of the rivals are inter pantheon anyway. Yeah, they're going to be as inside listed. the same pantheon. Um, oh, yeah, in the listed ones... In the they, listed ones, they're inter pan- yeah. intra-pantheon. Interpantheon. I did say interpantheon. Okay, yes, you were right. Yeah. yeah, no, I just misunderstood you. But yeah, because the books were trying to give you a way to make those pantheons interact, because of course in world history and mythology they didn't interact, and so they were trying to say, okay, what gods are going to maybe have friction and try to give you something to go on? But instead of like a good way of doing it that like gave you actual they stuff to go on, <laughs> they just gave you a list of names that were mostly nonsensical. Yeah, they were um, like Persephone and Osiris probably don't get along, but they didn't explain why or like what that might look like. Um, so, you know, we would always recommend if you're the ST, you know, figure out how you think those gods are going to Yeah, I've talked about before the entire, like, web of intrigue you want to make in your game, so you you know which gods are doing what. But, um, you should do that for your own. It shouldn't be on our website, unless we came out with a setting that was, this is our setting. These are how the, these are the relationships in our setting, these are whose rivals. But right now they mean nothing. Most of them are from the books. I think, like, there's a Jeff one up there that's fun. (laughs) Yeah, Jeff Jeff and Poseidon. Poseidon. (laughs) But, uh... I don't think that's, uh, we have a whole, like, separate one poster board we use for, for actual game. I think we made a video on it before. Yeah, we did. Um, so, figure the what's the website meaning. Yeah, because, I mean, even if you have those lists, if you don't know why those people are on that list, they're useless. Yeah. So, you're just going to have to look at it and say, if these two people met, how would they feel about each other? Or what would circumstances, like, need to cause to happen and go from yeah. there? So, sorry about that. I will try to remove those at some point. I just uh, have been not doing it because there are so many things I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, alrighty. I have a sign game coming up where all the PCs are either Kami or Teotl. I was wondering if you have any ideas for ways those two pantheons could interact because I'm drawing a blank. Now, by Kami or Teotl, she means Aztec or Japanese. I do. Those are, those are the names of their gods. Yeah, but, you know, nobody knows that. So, um, how do they interact? Uh, could, be, could be lots of ways. I mean, uh, generally speaking... I think the Japanese are probably against ritual sacrifice. Probably. They have a lot of... I mean, they've got harmony, and that usually is pretty cranky about health. health we need to go through the Japanese again, too. So, like, I don't I don't know if we actually agree with those virtues, necessarily. Um, maybe. maybe. Uh, but, uh, so we do... A lot of, lot of don't know, I think. To yeah. still answer your question, though, um, they probably have a lot of interesting interactions. Yeah, um, they're very, very different people. Like, they both very much respect their own laws and traditions and would be mad at you for arguing about them, but those laws and traditions are so different that they may not have any common ground Yeah, there. usually when I've had one or the other in a game, it's, uh, they're the lone wolf in a game full of people that are different cultures so that they're, like, the one person who's, like, my culture is important. Yeah. Fuck you. Like, that's their, that's their thing. <laughs> um, and having an entire game where everyone is, like, my culture, fuck you, I would make sure it's very balanced down the middle, otherwise the Japanese or the Aztec will gang up on the non-one. Yeah. Uh, which I, 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 assume, I assume you were doing. Um, but yeah. other than that, I mean, I think it'll be dependent on the story. Uh, Japanese people like their island. Yeah, you know, and Aztec people like their homeland. And yeah. I mean, as long as neither one is screwing with the other one's stuff too much, they probably won't have fights, but you know. I think it'll be important if, if early on there aren't some ground rules set, basically, in character between them, it could lead to a lot of problems. Yeah. But as long as everyone's like, hey, we all really like our own things. And I think... We're going to work together, but don't touch my stuff. Yeah. And don't get involved with my stuff. Um, I think honor-bound Japanese will have a lot of problems with the Aztecs uh, killing people. Yeah. And which, of course, from the Aztec perspective, they're going to be like, that's the responsible thing to do, and then they're not going to agree on that, so... Um, I think that both pantheons do, though, have a good flavor of, like, sometimes you got to do stuff for the greater good, and that's just the way mm-hmm. life is. And so, they're like, I feel like that duty virtue, they're going to connect on that a lot. Mm-hmm. If they can agree on something being their duty, they will get along for Yeah, us. I think that'll be a good point of the story, is to make sure that they all have a duty going into it, so mm-hmm. that 
you can always say, oh, are you guys not getting along? Are you fucking shit up? Not doing your duty? Okay, everybody roll duty. Remember, there's a there's a duty here yeah, that is like, overriding Even all if you things. hate that guy, you guys need to work together for a reason. And because of that, I would say probably make sure none of them switch out of duty. Like, make that, make that a ground rule. Nobody switches out duty. That's going to be our, like, unifying concept, is that uh, doing our jobs and what we need to do for this mission or this whatever we're doing right now, that's most important. And our other stuff we're going to deal with internally or, you know, figure, figure stuff out. You know, there's lots of character growth and building, but you need yeah, to figure out. Yeah, they'll tell you it differently. But, like, if the Kami sign can always say, I really am not okay with everything that's going on with these Teodal people, but Amaterasu who sent me here for a reason and I have to deal with that, then they will have a better, they'll have a, somewhere to, like, footing to stand on yeah. rather than just, like, going bananas every time it happens. And that that's it. it. That's Boom. It. That's All our right. God what politics. God question. politics Blood. episode. Yes. Episode. This is episode 52? 53. You 52. did 52 by yourself My next week. God. We're amazing. Yes. Um, all right. Cool. So see you guys next week. All right. See you guys.